Hey YouTube. So the uh, Will It Run videos are always one of my favorite to watch on YouTube and based on everything floating around out there, it's everybody else's favorite too. So I'm gonna do our first one on this. Uh, it's a 1973 SL350 Honda, obviously. Uh, I'll give you a real quick walk around on it before we get started on it. But I bought this from a guy that had owned it since 76, 77, it's almost since brand new. He didn't put many miles on it. It's got 3,305 miles on it. So it looks rough, but it's pretty, pretty new. Uh, he bought it and when I got it, I was kind of dismayed that it was missing the, the tag on it. And it had a, uh, a crudely stamped, okay, something or other, VIN number in it. I didn't know what the deal was there, but when I was looking at it, I found underneath the seat uh, a bunch of old paperwork, police reports, and Oklahoma Tax Commission papers uh, showing that this bike had been stolen when it was only two or three years old and had a, a new VIN number assigned to the to the frame uh, legally through the state. So I found all the paperwork for it. That was kind of interesting and all the repairs that went along with it, what the insurance paid out, which was kind of a surprise to find. So that made me feel a little bit better about the bikes originally. I had the original VIN number and everything. I, don't, I still don't have the plate, which sucks, but that is what it is. I paid 350 bucks for this from the guy that had had it for all these years. It had been parked out behind his barn, semi-protected from the weather for years. Kicks over, seems to have good compression. Uh, he couldn't really tell me much about it. Uh, all I've really done to it is the fuel pet cock had been leaking for decades with old gas in it. It was all gummy. So I put a fuel selector valve on it and I took a uh, battery out of one of my other bikes that I think is going to do the trick. But uh, we'll see if this puppy will run. All right, for a little closer look. Just, it's been parked for decades, you know. I think the wheels would clean up pretty good. It was kind of not directly in the elements. I think all the aluminum would shine up real well. Uh, one thing that impressed me about this was its completeness. I mean, headlight bucket's good. These aluminum fenders are pretty freaking minty. I mean, just virtually flawless front and back. It's very difficult to find vintage bikes that have good fenders, especially dirt bikes or enduros. Um, unfortunately, it is missing the fancy tips that go on here. So if anybody knows where a set are, let me know. Um, otherwise, the bike is pretty much complete. Virtually no rust other than the, in the seat, which I'll show you. Carbs are there. Chrome obviously is not in good shape, but the tank appears to be good. It's original paint, it's pretty sweet. I'm kind of torn between doing like a patina finish. I got a body shop and paint booth, so I could make it look freaking gorgeous, but in these original tank deals, I don't know, I'm on the fence about that. Um, the tack cable is broken the um, throttle cables a little sticky brake cables are janked out clutch cables jacked but it does appear to work at least the clutch anyways you see mileage tack which obviously is not going to work with broke cable tank he's got some little homemade little latch thing on it um this was really a street bike the whole time the guy that i got it from had it he just he never really took it off road uh, i think everything on here would clean up real well this bike was never never beaten to death the wiring is going to be an unknown as is typical i did get a key with it um 
seat is just absolutely munched. It's by far the worst thing on the bike. So, I mean, it's all blown out. So I'll be shopping for a new seat, but aside from that, it's in pretty good shape, pretty complete. I've got one, two, three wires. It looks like. Now these bikes, I'm pretty sure you have to have a battery in the system to get it to fire, but I've got me a battery, so I'll go get the battery and set it in there and set, set you up on a tripod and we'll get started. All right, so I'm gonna pull a plug out of it. They're tight. Cables have seen better days. That's pretty much the theme for this bike. I don't think it's been run for probably, shoot, I think since mid eighties or so. Yeah, I'm sure he's probably pulled it out and fiddled it with it once or twice since then, but I know it hasn't been ridden. Certainly not. All right. Plugs a little fuely, but most of the time with old vehicles, cars, trucks, bikes, tractors, lawnmowers, whatever, pretty typically they all have fuel system issues, especially in the uh, ethanol fuel days. You can't just park something with gas in it and leave it for days. Don't work that way anymore. I think I'll kick it over just to confirm that it will not spark. one the switches are a little sticky so I don't know I don't think it's gonna spark I think they have to have a battery in line feels like it's got good compression not seeing a spark okay So I'm going to assume that the red wire is probably a positive. This green wire is tied in, literally wrapped around like four different wires, all green. So I'm going to assume this one's ground. This one's had some pretty janky wiring. This got a fuse in it, so we're going to say that's also positive. See about this up. This came out of one of my Suzuki's, so you know it, it's a weak battery, but put it on the charge overnight, so I think it'll be okay. Okay, Mr. Classic Octane said, "Look, look for smoke." No pop or anything. I'll go ahead and snug it up just a little. <clears throat> I've got a bunch of old bikes sitting around that I've been buying up over the last seven eight years unless they ran when i got them i haven't done any work to them so i've got a bunch of potential will it run projects uh i guess i'll try the key oh we got lights light I assume an oil pressure light I don't know okay try again for spark 
Let me pull the plug out on the other side. I got this thing balanced on board, so I'm hoping that it doesn't fall off the kickstand. Ooh, that's a good spark. God, believe this thing gets hard. That's a good sign. Sweet. That's awesome. Well, I could ether it, see if it'll fart. I could turn the fuel on. I think I'll squirt a little ether in that hole and see if it'll pop. I think I'll shoot ether in both holes and see if they'll pop. All right, got some ether. Let's give her a little whiff. Now, knowing I got spark at least on this side, pretty much 100% confident it'll fire. It'll start, at least on this cylinder anyways. Just gonna snug this up by hand. I'm sure I'll be pulling it out later. Just give you, pull the other uh, plug out and give it a little shot. Of the fire spray. I expect to have issues from the fuel system based on the fact that the fuel valve was left on, which when you do that, fuel runs downhill, gets into the carburetors. The slides are free. It's plugged real clean, not fuely, which means it I wonder if it wasn't running on all cylinders. That plug looks new. So with this plug being clean and that one being sooty, that would lead me to believe that we either got a fuel or a spark problem on this side. Unless the guy just cleaned this plug and didn't clean that one. The wiring on this bike is pretty, pretty whacked. So I suspect it might have a bad coil, who knows. Usually people end up something thinking they've got an electrical problem with something and then they go to messing with it and then, then it gets a lot worse. Or vice versa with the fuel system. Um, I'm gonna back the camera up. All right, turn the key on. I'm confident it's gonna spark, at least on that cylinder, not so much on this one. I have to play the video back, unless I just notice smoke coming out of this side. Um, not sure about the choke. I think up. It says up with C written on the choke thing, so I'm gonna assume up is choke. Kicking it left hand, left footed, so I don't have to get on top of it. Oh, hey, hey, hey. That's good. Freaking awesome. It didn't sound like it was running on one cylinder, but I don't know. I've never heard this bike run, so I don't know. Um, so now I can, can either turn the fuel on and see what happens, or I can pop the bottom of the blip bowls off. I think I will pull the bottom of the bowls off. Okay, so it looks like the bottom of these bowls will come off. This drain has nasty stuff all over it, and the uh, carburetor looks like it's been pretty badly gummed up for a long time. I forget which way this comes off. Looks like it comes down and back. Yep. <clears throat> All right, see what's in this junk. Ooh, it came off. Cool. It is bone dry. You 
a little bit of debris in it. Not bad. Got some sand in it. Okay. But it doesn't look like it's had tons of stuff sitting in it. Let's see if I can get the needle and see that. Okay, cool. That's free. I'm shocked this is this clean. I wonder if the guy had as bad as the fuel shutoff valve was. I'm shocked that it these aren't just all swampy looking. Got a brass needle. So this carb kit's been in here. Well, a lot of the new kits come with rubber tipped deals or junk. Um I think what I'm going to do is spray the bottom of this with brake cleaner. Um, I'll move you around to the other side and we'll pop the other one off, bottom of the other one off, and I'll spray brake cleaner up in there. That didn't have much in it, so I would assume it's probably good enough at least to see if it'll kick over and fill up with fuel. I'm sure these dried up gaskets will be leaking like crazy, but I just want to see if it would run. Then if it'll run, if it'll go into gear, if I got any brakes, I'll tell you right now that um, the front brake isn't doing hardly anything. You can squeeze it as hard as you can, it'll just barely drag. Most of that's probably the cable. I'm sure the, I can't imagine the front brakes are wore out too bad, but pads themselves after 2,300 miles, 3,300 miles. Let's go to the other side. All right. The bowl on this side's clean. The one on the other side is not. So I think this one has been tinkered with. Same story. Also a brass tip needle. The floats have both floats have stains on them from sitting the gas in it. I suspect this dude tried to get the thing running either right when or right when he before he sold it or sometime in the last decade. It smells pretty gummy. I'll set these out on the cart over there, spray them out with brake cleaner and bring you back when it's time to put them back on. Okay, we're back. I've kind of cleaned out the bottom of the, the bowls. The carbs obviously need to take a ride through my uh, ultrasonic cleaner, but if this bike runs, that's when we'll do that. Give them a little brake cleaner. Other side. Okay, now another thing I like to do, um, anytime I pull a bike carburetor off or whatever, I'll, I'll uh, get the needle and seat out, I'll turn the fuel selector on and just see if I'm getting fuel from here to the needle and seat. So if I get fuel dumping out both of them, then uh, I'll know we got something. Ooh, that was yellow and goopy. All right. First couple seconds was some pretty ugly stuff coming out of there. So, whatever was in from here down, like I said, I replaced these a few months ago. Looked like coffee coming out of there. And not the coffee you drink. Speaking of that, I need to go get a drink of coffee. Okay, another thing I do is uh, I'll get some Scotch-Brite pad and just lightly hit all the way around the needles. 
I can't do the one in there, the passageway, but I can do this. If it gets a little crap on it, it can hang up. I also do the pivot pin for the float for the same reason. It may not make any difference, but I've been doing it for years on carburetors. So I'm not stopping now. Okay, this is going to be the fun part. Put this back in here. Okay. So, besides the bottom, it goes like that. So I'll put the needle in, put the float on. I can do this without dumping the needle. Oh, it's my lucky day. Okay. I'm going to go do the same thing on the other side. Oh, man. I could test to see if the needle... Is is actually gonna seal it off. I'll do that real quick. Yep. Okay, cool. You should at least seal it off enough to let the thing fire. I'll go ahead and put the bowl back on. I got most of the junk out. It's still got some in it, but nothing, no big loose chunks. In all honesty, I still expect problems from the fuel system and possibly the ignition system with the clean plug on this side. Or maybe it's the plug on the other side, the one that's dirty, that maybe that's the problem side. Who knows? Okay, let's go to the other side and repeat. All right. Now that I've got fuel all over everything and some brake cleaner, Same process. Clean my needles. Pretty much every old vehicle tractor that comes in that's been parked for a while, most of the time, if they were running when they were parked, they usually just need a little bit of work on the fuel system. <laughs> clean, the, clean the carbs out. We usually throw a set of plugs in them, clean the tank out, seal the tank if necessary, although I prefer not to do that unless it's pretty pretty bad rusted. All right, just give that just a little bit of a clean. It just feels smooth. If you can do this and feel ridges on it, there's a chance it could hang your float up. The float's got a pretty long passageway in it, so if there's grit in there, and there's grit on this, it's just gonna be that much more likely to hang up. This one shows evidence of sitting with fuel in it as well. It's a good idea to run your bikes out of gas when you're uh, done riding them. Especially if you ride them as infrequently as I do. It's not good for anything to sit there with gas just setting in the bowls. Especially not today's gas, it sucks. All right, try this again. If it can be my lucky day twice, I need to go to the casino. Shoot, yeah. All right, while I'm doing this, uh, just want to let everybody know I appreciate uh, everybody that's subscribed. I know that y'all don't know me well, and I don't have much out there yet, but hopefully in the future I can get enough stuff out there, enough content to keep it interesting. At least make it worth doing. I just enjoy doing this stuff and I know everybody else does too so. Okay so I'm gonna reach over and turn the fuel on see if it'll shut itself off again. Yep. Pour some more gas on the ground. <sighs> All right put the fuel bowl back on.
as you would expect, this thing been parked forever. So it really needs, a, like I said, a good carb cleaning, the gaskets, everything. Uh, but it's not gonna get that until I figure out if this bike will run, if it'll drive, kind of figure out, give the whole bike an evaluation of its condition. Trying to weed through all of my bike, my project bikes. I've got probably close to 20 of them. Just want to see what is and what isn't worth messing with right now. Um, well, I'll turn the fuel on and see how much fuel we get pouring everywhere it don't need to be. Fuel is on. I can't hear anything, but I assume the bowls are filling up. I'm pretty sure that these bowls are reversed now that I look at them because the drain screw is on the inside on this one and also on the inside of that one. I think I could probably get to it through here, but when I rebuild the carbs, I'll uh, do that. Well, there's no fuel pouring everywhere. I don't really want to open that drain valve. Um, I guess the next step will be to go over there, check the oil, which I should have done before I kicked it the first time, but I don't think it's going to hurt it to run for two seconds. Um, we will see. If it's got oil in it, I'll try to start it. If it starts, um, I'm gonna see, put my hands on the pipes and see if they're both warming up equally. Find out if it's running on one cylinder or two. That's assuming it'll run. I know it run off at least one cylinder. Uh, I still got no fuel dripping anywhere. So I'm gonna reset the camera up and bring you back in a second. All right, let's see if this dog's got any oil in it. Fuel is still on, still getting no drips. Got old oil, but it's clean oil. This guy also gave me manuals and stuff, so. I think back in the day when he drove it, before he parked it, he uh, probably took pretty good care of it. Um, it's a shame that it got parked for that long. If he'd have parked it indoors, the chrome would have been in good shape. Regardless, everything else is nice. Frame is good. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to turn it on, kick it. If it starts, I'm going to grab the pipes, see if I'm getting, getting some heat out of both pipes. And if I am, um, it'll be time for a ride. That's going to be pretty sketchy, as bad as these cables are, just dry rotted the crap. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have a clutch, I don't know if I'm going to have brakes. Could be a fun ride, like a really slow first gear ride. Anyways, enough talking. Oh, I'm getting fuel dribbling out of the drain of this carburetor. But it's coming out of the drain and not the top of the carburetor, so not worried. I'll choke it to the first position. All right, we got two lights. A moment of truth. Yeah, we're definitely dripping gas. Oh. See if I can drop this bike.
well on this cylinder. It's got a little heat, but it damn sure don't have much. This side's pretty hot. Hot enough I ain't gonna touch it. So we will shut the fuel back off because it's dripping. Good. It ran. Ran good on that one cylinder. Hmm. Still have work to do, clearly. Yeah, this pipe's real hot. That one's got nothing. Okay, I'm gonna pop this uh, bowl off, see if it's got any gas in it. After I snug this screw over here. Yep, it's already snugged. I'm not gonna mess with that. All right, this bowl has gas in it. It's cool, so we might. gas at all in the bowl. Got good travel. I think I'll shoot a little brake cleaner up in there again. Good possibility that it got some more junk in it. Let me get a little cup or a rag to catch some of this fuel. going to hit on all the cylinders if it's only got gas to one of them. Good fuel flow. I don't know what the deal is. Hmm. I wonder if it's hitting the inside of the bowls. It don't appear to be. If the carburetor is off, I can tip the carburetor upside down and steer it. Um, put it back in. And if it still doesn't fill the bowl up with fuel, then uh, take the carburetor off. I was pretty excited to find this bike. I mean, I wasn't looking for it, but I saw it pop up on Marketplace. These bikes are fairly valuable and a little bit rare. And it's 350. Basically the same motor as a CB350, except that it doesn't have a, an electric starter. First year these bikes actually did have an electric start. Like a starter mounted right on the front of the motor, just like a CB. Why, I don't know. They felt the need to get rid of it after that. Okay, we'll see if the needles work. It is getting fuel out of it. Where is it? If 
this bike would run, it doesn't need any internal work. This would be an ideal candidate for kind of a patina bike, or just one with just, you know, re in the chrome and redoing what needs to be redone, getting it rideable and tires are crap. But if it, if it doesn't start and it does have a problem, then uh, there's probably other bikes I have that would be more effective, you know, project bikes. And it's dry. So we clearly have a problem with how much float drop we got. <laughs> touching the bottom of the blue holes. It does look like there's tiny marks where it could potentially be contacting. But I don't see Oh, I see it. the arms themselves is what keeps it. I guess you just have to bend the whole bracket to get it to. Well, I suspect it's touching the sides of the fuel bowl. Oops, drop the needle. It does look like it's been manipulated. I can't tell if it's got rub marks on the bottom. Being a brass float and being old, there's no... The only thing I can think of why it would bind up like that. Looking at how deep this bowl sits. The bowls, these floats hung all the way down and they stick up just a little bit over the bottom of the, or the top of the bowl there hanging on here, they're all the way down here. I mean, it's got a tremendous amount of float drop that it doesn't need. So, it uh, would be a correct, based on the fuel line there, what would be a correct fuel level? That's as high as it would go right there. So, that's should be the ideal stop point, but it's going, it's like hanging way down here. So I'm going to manipulate this bracket just slightly and see if I can bend the float where they don't hang so low. Alright, so the purpose of doing this is just to see if the, the motor will, engine, will run. You know, if it's mechanically sound enough. I'm not going to go through all the trouble rebuilding the carbs properly and all that if, if it's got a dead cylinder or a valve problem something like that so what do I need to do here I need to bend this up see if I can whack this thing okay I am trying to figure out what a good fuel or a float level would be this or it'll shut off and have an acceptable amount of drop. I don't have the needle in it, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Okay, that got rid of a lot of the overhang. It got rid of a quarter inch of drop. Fairly confident the students in here messing with it based on the back of this fuel bowl is clean. It's probably closer. I've got a manual for this, but like I said, this was obviously a problem. So I'm just going to tweak it just a little, just enough to get the fuel bowl to fill up. Once the fuel bowl will fill up, then I'll uh, see if it'll start. If it'll run on this cylinder, then I'll go through and adjust all this to spec. Maybe buy new floats if you can get them. But anyways, I think that will be a, a 
little closer. At least try it. I would never consider driving this bike, you know, in the normal normal use without going through these carbs and make sure everything's set to spec and all that. I just want to see if it'll yard drive, see if the gears all work. All right, try this again. So I think where it's at now it might be a little a little too high a float level, but and then again it might not do anything. Might have a dry bowl again. Find out though in a second. Alright, try it again. This ain't leaking. It was all brown and cruddy and syrupy looking before. And oh, we got gas. Full bowl. Sweet. We got gas in the good gas, not the bad gas. I had that this morning. All right. I bet it runs on both cylinders now. The idle was a little high. I don't know if that's because it's cold or what. It's got an adjuster on here, but there's no freaking way. Oh, hell yeah, it will. it'll work. Back this nut off, I kind of. I am shocked that this is free. We'll leave it right there. Um, I need to uh, run that nut up once, once I start it. It's running on both cylinders now. It's going to be sounding a lot smoother and probably be revving faster. All right. I'm excited. I probably will still need a little choke. Not a full choke. All right. That on. Fuel on. I bet it fires up. And probably run on both cylinders. That'd be a trip. Second position kills it, so does the uh, off position. Well, it's hitting on both cylinders. Um, this pipe's still cooler, but it, it actually got hot this time. The other side's a lot hotter. Um, that's probably close enough that I we probably take it for a ride. I mean, it is building a little bit of heat. Now it's pretty warm.
could be the points a little dirty, but it is it is sparking, it is running. Um, well, I guess we'll roll it outside and uh, see if it'll go, and more importantly, see if it'll stop. Hopefully, all the gears in the transmission are good. Um, I'll bring you back shortly. Do this, maybe. I think that's more success than not. Uh, it runs. Definitely needs carb work, tune up, but does run. Pulls through the gears okay. Uh, I never hit third or fourth, or it might, it might even have five gears. I don't even know. But uh, no abnormal noises. Has absolutely no brakes. Runs fantastic on the left cylinder and runs about 75% of the time on the other. So it works. Thanks for watching.